Hey folks, welcome to Weekend Technical Analysis Update by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This Weekend Technical Analysis Report is for Monday, April 27th through Friday, May 1st, 2009. Well, last week was really an unbelievable week, folks. I want to discuss all the facets of last week. We saw a flood of earnings reports, most of them being taken positively by the markets. The markets had a rough day last Monday, dropping an insane amount, really four, three to four plus percent on the indexes, but the rest of the week traded back up. You had the NASDAQ moving higher for the seventh consecutive week, while the S&P faltered and was actually down for the week there. So you had six consecutive up, up weeks on the, on the S&P, seven on the NASDAQ, and so forth. Now, overall, what you're really looking at, folks, is some key levels on a technical analysis basis. We talk about trend line analysis, price, pattern, and time. That is our holy book, folks. We follow that. It has served us insanely well, and I want to give you guys that educational advice, give you guys the methods and tools so you can do it for yourself. That's what we try to do at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Now, let's talk some technicals here. First of all, what have we seen? We've seen a massive run in the markets for the last six to seven weeks. We've seen literally on the NASDAQ a 35% gain almost, just about, give or take a couple percentage points there, basically a 35% gain off the lows from early March. Now, when you've said that point and you've said that piece, you have to look at what's changed. Well, we've had some great bank earnings, but the only thing with the bank earnings, if you look closely, you can see that a lot of them are somewhat fabricated. They have one-time gains, one-time this, one-time that. The question is, can they sustain the move up they've had? A lot of people believe we're in this new bull market run. We're just going to continue up. I would say be overall cautious. Could it continue? Absolutely. But is there a shade or a little bit of inkling in my mind that it could falter? Yes, absolutely. Now let's talk some technicals on the charts. First of all, you're looking at your SPY 10-minute chart. All right, and we again, we each candle is 10 minutes here. We have the 20 moving average sliding up in yellow here. You have in white right down here. This is the 50 moving average. And in red sloping over here, coinciding with this green trend line, is our 200 moving average. This is what we follow on an intraday basis. I'm going to show you what each level means here and how key it is. Now, first of all, the yellow trend line right here, I'm going to show you where these come from. Let's go back a little ways. Your yellow trend line basically is a key one. It was the pivot high right here before a sell-off, the pivot low right over here. It actually goes back even further. But notice the levels here, folks. This is your yellow trend line. This is your beige one I have on my charts. All major, major levels in this market, all right? I can't stress that enough. All right, going back, every trend line on my chart, you can see them coming from all the major levels. So there's a reason why they're in there. They're not arbitrary numbers. They're exact pinpoint accuracy numbers for where the market will re meet resistance or support. Now, first of all, notice how this yellow trend line, the market traded right up into it prior to that fall. Now, the Friday action was one of the most insane days. Believe it or not, Thursday was pretty insane as well, but Friday topped it because of the late day uh, heroics, or if you could talk about the major moves in this market. Now, what happened? Well, first of all, the first half of Tuesday was a no brain. Uh, Friday was a no brainer. Friday's action, no volume in the market. What we preach is when there's no volume in the market, especially in a micro bull market within a bear market like we're seeing right now, the market's going to go up. Why? Because psychology dictates it. Human beings are naturally bullish. It's just their natural nature. It's very hard for us to be bearish. We're generally optimistic. So when you have no volume in the market, the little volume that you have, if it's not based on a hardcore you know, selling pressure based on news or something, is going to generally lead the market up. That's the psychology of the markets, okay, folks? You have to understand that. So what you can see here, no volume in this market until 2 p.m. Now, why? In 2 p.m., the Treasury, the government, were gonna, was going to release their stress test criteria on the banks. Now the banks were actually going to get their their results. All right, they got their results on Friday, but the rest of the investor population was only getting what the criteria was. We're going to get the rest of the news on May 4th. Now, whether or not that's fair, I don't know. I personally like to see everything on the table. It's all about transparency. That's what supposedly this new government is all about. Yet here you have some banks getting the results. Uh, if you don't think some of that information is going to get leaked out, I think we're all a little naive if we think that. All right, so it's a little unfair in my book, but nonetheless, it is what it is. So two o'clock, we knew we were going to get the criteria. We knew we were going to get some word from the government, from the Treasury, from the Fed on what they saw in growth. We did get that, and you were trading really at the highs of the day going into that. So the market started to trade up on light, light volume. We got to this beige trend line, which is right at around $87. That's resistance. 
Okay, $87 resistance. You can see how the market kind of traded along that. Prior to the announcement at 2 o'clock, you started to get a little bit of profit taking. Profit taking took us down. You got a 1 2 bar right into 2 o'clock. What kind of pattern is this? Bearish pattern. All right, why? Because they're inside bars inside a big green, a big red candle. You have to understand your price pattern and timing. Timing is key. Price is key. Uh, everything is key. Everything. Price pattern time. Got to know it, guys. Absolutely dictates here that you could look for a negative uh, move in the market off of this pattern. What do you get? You get an actual negative move that takes you all the way down. Where does it take you? To the 50 moving average here in white. Also, I have a major trend line coinciding with the lows of the day here at about 85.65 to 85.70. That line gets punctured. You have a necktie of the moving average with this cross trend line, and that gives you your bouncing opportunity. Market spikes all the way down here, then reverses. What do you get? A little bit of a, a bottoming tail there. Bullish pattern reversal, and all of a sudden you start to rally. The rally off of the sell-off takes you all the way up, makes new highs, starts to co coincide with this upper yellow line. This is your second major resistance line on this chart, which is around 87.20. You puncture that beautifully, can never quite get up you start to sell a little then rebound but again notice inside bars see the red candle one two three inside bars no candle closes outside of this red candle that dictates possible bearish activity there all right sure enough what happens this is the one of the wildest candles i've ever seen folks in my trading career again we were trading near the highs of the day and the last five minutes of the day from 3 55 p.m eastern time to 4 p.m eastern we saw a massive sell-off that dumped the spiders from the SPY from basically 87.20 all the way down to the 50 moving average again at around $86, just a little above 86. That's one of the biggest short drops where we saw massive selling. Look at the volume, volume candle right here in so, so long. I can't even stress that, folks. It was an unbelievable dump. Well, now, again, notice the levels. You have a blue trend line right here, which, again, notice here how we closed above it. We tested this one, but you never closed below the blue trend line. Right here, we did another necktie. Again, here's your necktie of your purple and white 50 moving average. Your 50 moving average is there again, and your blue trend line, what happens right off of that? Right in the last minute, you get a spike back higher, and the market trades back up. Now, what was this about? Well, obviously, there was some profit taking there. We're going to see if this meant anything more, but this was the biggest sell candle I've seen in a long time in the shortest amount of time. This candle, or this candle, you know, a lot of them take a long period of time to come through. You have 10 minutes. This one literally formed in about three minutes, and then the last two minutes bounced it up. It was truly amazing to see. So overall, a quite an active day. Volume overall was about average for the day, but this was considering that all the volume came in in the last two hours of the day. Right here, notice the volume increase, no volume prior. What happens on light volume? Float up. Once we get volume, you get whipsaw action. Boom to the downside, boom to the upside, boom to the downside. Now. Again, I want to show the 60 minute, but the levels you're going to watch for this coming week in this are, first of all, I'm going to show you a trend line. This one I want you to watch very closely, mostly coinciding with the 50 moving average here, but you can see from these lows crossing right in here to the low to the low, you can see every time we hit this lower trend line, it seems like we're bouncing. If that breaks, you're looking for gap fill right down here in my book. You will see that gap fill at 85.40, 85.50, right into that. If you break through, you should see the 200 moving average, which is around $85 next week. So watch that watch this trend line if that breaks you should get a pretty big dump on that market all the way down in this range towards the $85 level uh, your other levels to watch on your upside I'm going to show you your 60 minute now this is a major level should we trade up into it you're going to look for the high at around 87.65 that's going to be some major resistance up in that level that's the previous high remember the big dump on Monday all week you basically just recaptured or closed slightly lower so you really didn't even take out the whole move at the highs you almost did but you never quite took out and you never got back to the highs from previous Friday, this last Friday. That's key because this is a big dump, very bearish. Overall, you can still look at this as somewhat of a possibility until we take out this high of being bearish. Once we take out this high at around 87.65, then all of a sudden it does not become bearish. Now this coming week, this is your level to watch up here on your downside gap fill if we break that line I just showed you. Otherwise, see this line on your 60 minute that connects through the lows. I want to show you quickly where that comes from. If you scan all the way back, and you take this line from here to the lows and all the way there, 
That line is going to be extremely key. You can see it fluctuating all the way up through the lows here, and that's going to be something you have to watch. Now, this coming Wednesday, you have the FOMC policy rate decision. The rates will not change. The key is going to be what does the Fed say? What comments do they make? You know they'll be somewhat bullish. The question is, does the market believe it, folks? This week is relatively light in earnings from what we've seen, so be ready for some whipsaw action. I do believe you're going to see some pretty whippy markets, all right, especially with volume in this market. Have a wonderful week. Good luck trading. Join our research center. It's the best out there, folks, at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take care.